Finally, after years of waiting, there is a new LED bulb to talk about, and that is the all-new Morimoto two-stroke 4.0. The only question I have is, is it actually good, or is it just a complete flop? So right off the bat, the two-stroke 4.0 looks very similar to what you've seen a few years ago, the 3.0 from Morimoto. And this Morimoto two-stroke 3.0 is not to be slept on. This was one of the best and brightest bulbs that we have tested on this channel. So I'm really excited to see how this performs. So I'm gonna show you on the wall what it looks like in a projector housing. I'm also then gonna show you what it looks like in a reflector housing. But this bulb right here is really good for fog lights also. Now in America, it's not technically DOT compliant to put this in your headlight housing. However, if you're from overseas or if you wanna put this in your fog lights, you sure can do that, upgrade your original halogen bulb to something like this, the Morimoto 4.0. Now, what you're gonna see on this wall is a different looking beam pattern and brightness. Don't just pay attention to brightness here. Pay attention to the difference in the beam pattern. That is going to keep you safer when you're driving down the road. Essentially, what we're looking for is a bulb that can directly replicate this, the original halogen bulb. This bulb right here has a wire wound filament in it. I know you've seen this on our channel a lot. This is tungsten, and this is the part of the bulb that lights up. This right here needs to be at a certain place inside that headlight housing so that it doesn't scatter the light all over. So if you're gonna get a bulb like this that replicates that wire wound filament by having a small chip set on a small PCB, you have a recipe to have a very good beam pattern. But does it? Let's see in a projector housing. So what you see here is one headlight housing with your stock halogen bulb 10 meters away from the wall. I'm measuring this with a digital lux meter. A lux meter measures the actual usable brightness at a certain point. It is very good at telling the difference in brightness, so the percentage change from one light to another. So we're gonna be able to tell if it's brighter or less bright. If you try this test at home, your lux numbers will most likely be different because if I was one foot forward or one foot back or had different ambient light, the numbers would change. So pay more attention to the percentage change from one light to another. That'll be more accurate for your tests at home. If you have projector lights, it looks like this and you can tell it's that dingy yellow color and it's outdated. It's the last thing you want on your vehicle. It is not going to be keeping you safer when you're driving down the road. With this projector housing, I do see a pretty good width. It actually goes from one end of the wall to another and you do have that hot spot that is where all of the light is centralized in the center, which is going to give you that down the road punch of light. That is what we're looking for. When you install the two stroke, 4.0, it looks like this. As you can see, you've got that nice bright white modern color. This is a lot of the reason why people upgrade their lights. It makes the front of their vehicle look so much better. So it's nice, it's bright white, you still get that really wide beam pattern, and you've got that hot spot in the center. But is it brighter? The measurement I got from the stock halogen lights, we're gonna call it the benchmark, was 410 maximum lux. The two-stroke 4.0, the all-new bulb at startup was 520 maximum lux. So it is 27% brighter than your stock bulb in this H11 projector housing. 27% brighter is actually pretty good. However, we're going to test things a little bit differently today. And that is because there's a little party piece that this bulb has, and that is this. This is the driver, and this driver actually ramps up in brightness. So it has a conservative startup of about 18 watts of power, and after 15 minutes, it's got 22 and a half watts of power. And so that means that this LED bulb slowly gets brighter over time. And I thought that was kind of silly. Why wouldn't you want this at full brightness at the immediate startup? But then I thought about it. We don't actually drive our vehicles for only a 45 second period or a minute and a half. We drive them for 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time or longer. And if you notice other LED bulbs, even the Ultra 2 bulb, that bulb we love, they all lose brightness over time. So a bulb that slowly ramps up might actually be good. After 15 minutes, we measured the brightness light output again. The two-stroke 4.0 after 15 minutes, to my surprise, was still 27% brighter than your stock halogen bulbs. That means that there was a decrease in brightness of zero. That is wicked. The fact that there is an LED bulb out there that maintains its brightness over time is wild. 
So even if it's less bright than other competitor bulbs out there, after a certain amount of time, it's going to be brighter no matter what. I know you guys are gonna ask, how does this bulb then compare to the brightness level after 15 minutes of the Two Stroke 3.0? So I did it. And the Two Stroke 3.0 was only 5% brighter than your stock halogen lights after 15 minutes. So these are by far a better option if you're using your vehicle and you're driving for an extended period of time. Another really cool thing about the 4.0s is that they also are available in yellow. So the white looks like this and the yellow looks like this. Now with yellow light, you do lose quite a bit of brightness. So it's actually not gonna be as bright as your stock halogen. However, that yellow is going to pierce through the particles or the snow a lot better when you're driving around. So if you like a yellow headlight bulb, it looks like this and you still get that beautiful beam pattern. You get the width, you get the hot spot. Just note that it's not nearly gonna be as bright as the white bulb. Now, what if you have a reflector headlight housing? Your stock halogen light looks like this. This again was from an 09 to 18 Ram. The width of this beam pattern is terrible. If you've got a reflector housing, it'll look something like this. It's not very wide, it's not bright, it's that dingy color because it's coming from the halogen bulb. And I know that you want that bright white color. So here it is with the Two Stroke 4.0, it's much brighter. The light is not scattered all over the place like some other bulbs out there. If you just grab some multi-sided bulb off the shelf, some Amazon bulb, it'll look something like this. And no matter how hard you rotate it, you are not going to get it to align properly and the beam pattern is going to be terrible. The Two Stroke 4.0 definitely have technology to give you a precise beam pattern when you're driving down the road. This is exactly what you want. It has a gradient of light, so you got that hot spot at the top. And as you work your way down, you're gonna notice it gets less bright. And that is so it does not blind you when you're driving. These are intended for you to also put them in the fog lights, so you can have a perfect distribution of light. At initial startup, the stock lights came in at 530 maximum lux. And with the 4.0, I measured 870 maximum lux which was 64% brighter than your original lights. That is insane. Now, I did notice in this test, and all of these tests are gonna be a little bit different, like I said, I did notice that I lost a little bit of brightness, but not nearly as much brightness as I would see from a different LED bulb. It's still 43% brighter after 15 minutes of being on. In my opinion, that is a win. I know you're gonna ask, how does it compare to the previous version? Well, after 15 minutes, the Two Stroke 3.0 was only 40% brighter. So it was not as bright after 15 minutes as the Two Stroke 4.0. So at least from these tests, you know that it is better than one of the best bulbs on the market today. This is what the yellow Two Stroke 4.0 bulb looks like in your H11 reflector housing. If you wanted to use that, you sure could. In our testing, I measured 400 maximum lux at startup from the yellow bulb, and after 15 minutes of leaving it on, we measured 380 max lux. So thankfully, they don't lose a lot of light, but like I said, the yellow light output is never as bright as the bright white light output. And in my opinion, I would much rather have a white bulb than a yellow bulb. Now, I will admit that a lot of people don't use the yellow in a headlight housing. They more so would do it to replace their halogen bulb in a fog light housing. This is what a fog light housing would look like. And if you were to replace it with that yellow bulb, this is what it looks like. That's a much better way to improve your fog light light output if it's snowing or if it's foggy outside. In my opinion, this is a much better upgrade than putting these in a headlight. So is this bulb a complete flop? Well, no, it was brighter than the 3.0 and to me, that's a win. Now, I got those beam patterns by adjusting this bulb properly. As you can see with this stock reflector headlight housing, there is some lines in the side. It's essentially mirrors and they're going vertical, as you can see. Well, these lights right here on this bulb, this LED chip and this LED chip need to be shooting outwards. So it needs to shoot like this. So it needs to sit like this. You cannot have this bulb sit like this or like this or like this. It needs to be sitting upright just like this. So. That is how you would align this bulb inside of your housing. Since a bunch of these housings are different, you might need to align it. The 3.0 bulbs had adjustability, but now and again, that adjustability would wear out and then it would just keep spinning. 
And that's not what we want. We want it to be set and then you forget it and you never have to worry about this bulb ever again. So I think this is probably one of the biggest major improvements of this new bulb is that Morimoto changed how this is adjusted. So on a lot of these sizes, some are different. It'll come with this right here, a little wrench. And you're gonna take this wrench and turn this counterclockwise. You don't have to take this off all the way, just loosen it up and then that'll allow you to spin this collar here. So when it's in the housing, you can set it just perfect and then tighten it back down. It might take some trial and error, just make sure that it's upright inside of your housing. You do not want that light scattered all over the road, you want that nice cutoff so you're not blinding oncoming drivers. I'm very thankful Morimoto stepped up their game with the adjustability. For a premium bulb, you expect something to not wear out. This does have a lifetime warranty. That's another win from Morimoto. This has a lifetime warranty because they're going to stand behind it. It is very high quality. Now there's one major thing that you need to know when it comes to these bulbs, and that is how these bulbs are cooled. You'll see a lot of LED bulbs have fans on the back, or they're gonna have a huge driver, or you're gonna have these fins that you bend and try to cram inside the headlight housing. These don't. These are not big at all. This bulb is so small that you sure can pack all of this inside of your headlight housing and still put your dust cover over it. But how do they cool themselves? Just like the 3.0, it looks like this. You've got an intake here, and then it comes out here. If you use smoke, you can really tell what I'm talking about. There's one side of this bulb that's sucking in the air. It's sucking in the cool air, and then that's cooling the bulb. But the hot air, instead of just having it blow outwards, it's actually blowing back into the headlight housing, and that is supposed to keep the headlight housing warm. This effectively cools the bulb while warming the ambient temperature inside the housing. With even more static pressure than the previous version, the cooling system on the two-stroke 4.0 maximizes longevity of the bulb while serving up a bad weather benefit not found elsewhere. Thankfully, this is headlight revolution, and what we do is actually test to make sure you guys don't buy stuff that doesn't work or has false claims. So, I've got this device right here, and I'm going to measure the surface temperature of the headlight housing. I'm gonna leave it on for 15 minutes. I then left it on for 25 minutes to see if it would change. So this is what your stock headlight housing looked like. So I turned it on and I let it sit for 15 minutes. The peak temperature that I saw was around 351 degrees Fahrenheit. That is super hot and yes, that is going to melt snow. Here's the deal. I lived in Minnesota for most of my life and it gets negative 30 degrees. And when you're driving, you also got that wind chill. It gets extremely cold. I've never personally had an experience where even with LED bulbs, they have iced up or they've gotten too much snow on them and you can no longer see. So you'd have to go and scrape your headlights. I've never personally had that problem. I do hear people having this problem and that's why they wanna heat up the headlight housing and that's why they maybe don't like LED bulbs. I've never had this problem, but it is a big deal to some people. 351 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty smoking hot and that's definitely going to melt the snow and ice. When I installed the 4.0, I turned it on and I let it sit for another 15 minutes. At the peak, I only saw about 69 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't think that's going to melt the snow and the ice, but I do know that it's going to keep the bulb really cool. I left it on for another 10 minutes, so now we're up to 25 minutes, and I only got a surface temperature of about 73 degrees. I was interested to see how that compared to other LED bulbs, so I put in the Ultra 2, and after 15 minutes, the surface of the headlight lens was essentially the same as the 4.0, and after 25 minutes, yeah, it was about the same as well. So is it a flop when it comes to the passive cooling for the Morimoto two-stroke 4.0? Not really, it doesn't heat up the lens like I would like, but it's got a 12,000 RPM dual layer fan to suck in cool air to the body of the bulb. That is going to cool it like no other. So by now you're probably wondering, will this even fit my vehicle? Well, the cool part is there's actually 13 different bulb sizes. So there's more than there was with the 3.0. There's some weird sizes too, like the H1 or a 9012. And there's a lot of really cool things specific to each bulb size. 
For instance, the H11 has this tension spring. It's this little metal tension spring, which actually provides five newton meters of force inside the housing. What does that even mean? It really just means that it puts that bulb exactly where it needs to be inside that housing. Remember to produce that good beam pattern. It's specifically designed to put it exactly where you need it so you don't scatter the light everywhere. Or the H4 LED bulb. There's this reflector over top of it to give you even more light output. In a typical H4 application, only about 30% of the raw lumens are projected on the road as forward illumination. With this specific optic, with the 4.0s, about 40% of the lumens will be projected onto the road. The region of the reflector directly above the bulb is responsible for a critical amount of light within the beam pattern. This is specific to the H4 bulbs, but it is a patented feature by Morimoto. This is undoubtedly a premium bulb. And if you're a huge fan of name brand stuff, if you have an LED bulb that you wanna upgrade your original halogen bulbs with, this is it. The all new two stroke 4.0. It is packed with more patented innovative features than any other bulb on the market today. It's got incredible cooling features and a lifetime warranty. Be sure to put in the comments below, what bulb should we test against this one to see if this is truly the best bulb in the world?